guys welcome to today's video today I'm giving you an in-depth look of my fourth grade language arts curriculum pick for the 2024-2025 homeschool year this is the specific main language arts curriculum we're using we are using the entire language arts year package from moving beyond the page for the 8 to 10 age range so today's video, I'm just sharing the language arts portion of that. I'm going to give you a look inside all of the units, what books we're going to be reading. So I hope you guys enjoy today's video. I'm going to be doing a video like this for all the subjects. So we're using language arts, science, and social studies for both the 8 to 10 level and the 10 to 12 level. So six videos total will be coming out. So you can get an in-depth look of what the units look like, how they correspond and work with the books. We have been using units from Moving on the Page for two years. So I understand how they work. They do seem a little odd to someone who's never used them. They are set up um, as individual units. So there are 12 language arts units that my daughter will be using through her fourth grade year. The age level she's using, the eight to 10 age level is uh, teacher led. And so the units are written to me as the teacher and then I give the activities to my daughter. There are tons of activities after each lesson. You can do all of them, you one of them, you can choose. The activities are always changing, but in language arts, they do contain all aspects of language arts, including vocabulary, writing, spelling, grammar, reading. And so I am very excited to share the inside of this curriculum with you guys. So the first unit is going to be Little House in the Big Woods, which goes along with the book by Laura Ingalls Wilder. My daughter has actually already read this book. We read it two years ago, but she was really young. She was in first grade. Um, so I am excited for her to read it and kind of have like a different take on the unit study. This unit study has a lot of comparison on how they live versus how we live now. There's a lot of talk of, you know, responsibilities of survival, um, household chores, you know, just really understanding how the setting and the scene of that, that world that at that time, um, with all moving beyond the page units, there are, you know, the assigned chapters to read. And then there are the discussion questions, which you can ask verbally. You can have your child fill out the activity. There is a lot of vocabulary in this. There are different aspects um, regarding, I think like maple leaves, maple sugar. So there's recipes. There's, you know, I think the thing that I really love the most about moving on the page, which you're probably going to hear me say a ton in this video, is the variety. So even though this is just language arts, there's science elements, there's social studies elements, there's, you know, home economics. It's just so fun. And then this does end the every unit does end with final project and they're always different and this one is a pioneer family night which looks like so much fun the next language arts unit is the sign of the beaver i want to say my oldest daughter read this in another literature study um this one has a lot of like different state studies in it um again it is like you know old wilderness survival um we see some like cause and effect in here. We see some writing. So in this, there is a persuasive writing um, paper that they're going to do. I do like this because it kind of has them fill out like different elements to build their store or to build their writing. And so with moving me on the page, your child is going to be writing papers and you know, they may need help in some aspects, but I do feel that the moving me on the page does provide a lot of like graphic organizers to help them come up with ideas, organize their ideas, and put that on, you know, the required paper. The final project is to make a movie of the book, which I think is so fun. Again, it's just a unique approach to a different project. The next is Native American Stories. And I like this because this is a whole bunch of just different stories. So even if you don't, get, there's no way I think you get to read all of these in the book. But this is just something fun that I think all my kids would like is reading all of these stories. Not only is there the storybook, but there's actual other stories in this book. There's some geography practice in this lesson. 
story mapping, comparing stories, writing an animal tale. This one talks a lot about culture and um, culture. It goes into animals and survival, different myths and legends and creation stories. So this unit is covering so many things. And then again, we go back to like just grammar practice and then their final project in this one is uh, making their own myth. The next language arts is Ben and me. We're going to be learning about Benjamin Franklin. I do like when they add kind of, you know, like the nonfiction type things in here. As you can see, like all of these books, um, you know, are relatable and can be real. Um, this goes into the colonies. And again, if you're not familiar with moving beyond the page, these do pair up with either a science or social studies unit. So the reason that we're kind of doing it in a certain order is they're also learning things in science or social studies that go along with these language arts units as well. We have vocabulary words. If you've noticed, all the units so far have vocabulary words, but they're kind of set up in a different way. Um, this one is obviously about inventing different things. More vocabulary, um, fact and opinion. A writing rubric so it looks like they're gonna be writing something else in this there's the Yankee doodle song elements of historical fiction and final project an interview or party for Ben so this one they kind of give them an option of what they want to do for their final project the next one is the lion the witch and the wardrobe which I'm so excited for because we actually wanted to read this one this current school year and we didn't get to it and so this one, you get to do a little project on meeting the author. You talk about good versus evil. You talk about the world of Narnia. There's some craft activities in this one. More myths and legends. More vocabulary practice. Gift ideas. It looks like an activity. We have our grammar in there, our possessive nouns. We talk about leadership roles. We talk about a Asselin, a Christ-like figure. And the final project in this one is actually a tic-tac-toe chart where they get to um, pick some things on the board and do a couple different projects, which again, it's creative, but then the kids kind of feel like they're doing, they're picking something on their own. Then we go into the BFG by Roland Dahl. We are talking about some giant activities, which is super fun. They're really getting the kids to like use their imagination. We're talking about present and past tense quotes. I see some recipes in here. Um, we're Jack and the Beanstalk, that's fun. Tangible or intangible. Vocabulary, more vocabulary, cause and effect. And so if you've noticed, there are the same types of concepts being taught throughout all these units, um, but they're just presented in a different way. So I know I've heard people who do a moving me on the page unit and they're like, they're doing cause and effect and my kid doesn't understand it. Well, if you were using all the units in order, you just like you're seeing right now, that's repeating it over and over again. So it's not like they're just showing the concept once, they're getting shown the concept multiple times in different ways. This one does end with a final project, a recipe for a dream or a newspaper report. So again, a really fun options that the kids can choose from. Next up is language art stories from Africa and Asia, and they're reading two books, Sudoku, Paper Cranes, and The Mystery of Meerkat Hill. In this unit, they are learning about Botswana. They are doing more vocabulary. I think this one, they actually get to make their own crossword puzzle. They are gonna do some editing practicing, writing a script for a scene. They get to make a diorama and a report and they're kind of working through that. They learn about Japan and different Japanese vocabulary, different holidays. They have their grammar practice in there. They have some similarities and differences. They're gonna be comparing some of the books that they read, some of the stories that they read. This one does not, they're gonna write a poem in this one. And this one does not have a final project, but it's probably because the matching up concept has like a project going on at, 
in it as well. Next up, she is going to be reading Holes. I love Holes. I love the movie. I can't wait for her to read this. Um, this one, there is a lot of talk about like the state of Texas, the desert biome, animals being an adventure, law. And so all those things I just said are normally like individual units. However, those are all getting laid in here. And so I'm going to repeat it again. This is why I really love Move Me on the Page. We're doing a language arts unit, yet here we are learning about biomes. We're making fossils. We're, um, you know, still practicing our grammar. We're, we're doing poetry. Um, we're doing recipes. But it's just such a fun way to really mix everything up and keep language arts fun, in my opinion. They're writing a letter in this and then their final project. This one made me so excited. Like I want to do this stuff. They get to design like their own camp. So they have like a checklist. They get to make like a song and like other elements of camp that they get to like design on their own, which you guys know my kids love going to camp. And so they absolutely are going to love that. The next one is stories from Europe. So again, this is kind of covering our geography and social studies, but this is our language arts unit. And so we still have our science and social studies as well. In this one, we get to read a couple different picture books. So I do like the rotation between picture books and chapter books in the other units. It kind of breaks it up a little bit. And these picture books are just absolutely beautiful. Um, we are learning about folk tales, fables, fairy tales, myths, legends. But again, we've been hearing about myths and legends throughout this entire year so far. We are learning about Europe. We are learning our grammar, prepositional phrases, story elements. We are still doing our vocabulary. We are learning about commas. We are making a story. So this final project is writing your own story. Again, it gives you your checklist. It gives you all these graphic organizers. It tells you when to do a rough draft and it even gives you these really cute story pages to write your story on, which I'm dying a little bit. They're so adorable. The next book is Abel's Island. This one we're talking about like natural resources, um, more vocabulary, parts of a boat. We're learning about the characters we're measuring. We are doing more writing graphic organizers. We have rubrics in here. We have more vocabulary. We have animal adaptations, hibernations, parts of speech, ability to change, bubble maps, Final project, your own deserted island. There's a rubric, there are little handy guides on how to complete that project. Pedro's journal. In this one, we are talking about um, obviously exploration, historical fiction, which I think is really good. Um, I didn't know what historical fiction was until I started homeschooling my kids a few years ago. I just didn't really understand what historical fiction meant and like the purpose of it. Um, so I think that that's a really great introduction to that. There's references to Christopher Columbus in here. We are learning about, um, you know, the journey to America, living at sea, living on land. Um, so we're doing subject and verb agreements, figures of speech. We're making story cubes, which are fun, hands-on little activity. And that was their final project with all those story cubes. And the last uh, unit for language arts. So again, these were 12 units, 12 books. Well, a little bit more than 12 because some units have more than one book is Mrs. Frisbee and the Na Rats of Nymph. We are learning the fantasy genre in this one. We have our vocabulary. We have our plot flow charts. Um, something I forgot to mention is sometimes in Moving Me on the Page, there is a, an activity you work on throughout the entire book. Um, you'll add things to it, you know, after you read so many chapters. And that looks like this one has that in there. We're learning about homophones. We are doing some character bubble maps, irregular plurals. You're designing a maze, tools and machines, a perfect place to live, researching and testing, combining sentences, plot diagrams, the next chapter, and so much more. So 
obviously I did not show every single page and you know I was flipping through it and then I did a filming of me flipping through it so you may have seen certain things and I may have said other things but overall I think what's really important to understand is there are so many things being taught in these units um, so many different subjects being combined into these language arts units and again these do pair up also with additional science and social studies units and so i really love this curriculum i love all the aspects and just like right now going through all that i am so excited for my fourth grader next year I am so excited for all these activities, all these projects she gets to do. It just sounds honestly like a lot of fun. Um, there are those like vocabulary and grammar elements and writing papers, but there's also so many fun and creative activities also in there. There's recipes, there's, you know, animal studies, there's learning about different states and different cultures. And I just really love how this is put together. So I hope this kind of helped for those of you that don't really understand what they mean on the page or really never done a unit from them or done multiple units. Um, I've pretty much done the entire seven to nine year um, piece by piece. I wish I would have just done the whole year the way it was meant to be. So <laughs> learn from my mistake. There is a method if you actually follow the entire year, as you can see, um, concepts pick up on each other. So that is what my fourth grader, her main language arts curriculum. There are a couple other resources and other like little add on curriculums we're using. But this is her main spine, or not main spine, but like her main set of curriculum. Um, our goal is to complete it all. I've had comments where it's going to be very challenging. People have said it's very challenging to complete all of it in the year. If we don't finish the last unit or two, it's okay. <laughs> We're not going to freak out. Um, for me, it's more about doing the activities and enjoying them and learning from them rather than like rushing through just to get it done. So I'm so excited. I'm excited to show you the science and social studies as well, because then you can kind of see how they all are going to be interacting with each other. And then if you're interested to see the sixth grade level, so that will be two years above this level, um, I'm doing the same type of video. So you'll see the language arts for that. You'll see the science and social studies just to see how the activities um, change. Um, there is a difference in them. So if you're interested in seeing that as well as like how this curriculum evolves, you're going to want to stay tuned. So thank you so much for being here. If you're new, please hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions, comments, leave those down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Have a great day, guys. We'll chat soon. Bye.